Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman integration. Today we're going to be solving this integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x over x plus 1 dx. We're going to be using uh, a bunch of tools today. We're going to be using a result um, that we found in the previous video, that is the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the squares. In other words, this, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared over 12. And we found that result in the previous video. That's true. That comes from a manipulation of the, uh, the Basel problem, which says that the sum of the reciprocals of the squares non-alternating is equal to pi squared over 6. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, let's see, we want to do Feynman integration, so we want to reparameterize that somehow. That's not really going to work. There's nowhere where you can plug a T into that equation to make it any easier or better. So we need to find another way. Well, recall from uh, some previous videos, we were able to recover factors of LNX um, by taking derivatives, partial derivatives with respect to t of x to the t. So that's what we'll do in this case also. So let's go ahead and create a function of t that's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t over x plus 1 dx. Okay, um, great. How does that help us? doesn't really help us very much right now, but um, we do know this. We can get this out of that. We know that f prime evaluated at zero is going to be equal to i. Because think about that. If you take a derivative of this with respect to t using the Leibniz rule, you'd simply take a derivative of this, a partial derivative of this, with respect to t, actually the whole thing with respect to t, giving you natural log x times x to the t over x plus 1 dx. And then if you evaluate that at 0, you just end up with this. Um, so, yeah. All right. But, I mean, how are we going to find f prime of, of 0? Well, we can take, like I said, we could take a derivative with respect to t, and then try to actually evaluate the integral. That's not the way to go, though. That's, that's too difficult, maybe impossible. Um, what we want to do is find a new expression for this and then take a derivative. All right, so, well, a couple videos ago, actually many videos ago now, we, uh, we utilized this fact, that the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus x on the interval negative 1 to 1. Um, so that way, as long as your x value is between negative 1 and 1, these two statements are equivalent. That means that this is also true. We just replace x with negative x, and we get negative 1 to the n x to the n. And that's equal to 1 over 1 plus x on negative 1 to 1. Um, great. All right, so let's rewrite our f of t um, utilizing this fact. All right, so f of t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. Um, and then we're going to have, let's see, we'll do the 1 over x plus 1 first. So that's going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, let's see, this is just uh, negative 1 to the n, x to the n. That takes care of our 1 over x plus 1 because they're equal. And then we have an x to the t, but I'm just going to bring that in side our sum as a plus t. You should all be comfortable with that. All right, now we're going to use Fubini's theorem uh, to switch the uh, integral and summation signs. So we're still
still going to have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Um, except now we're going to be taking the integral of this thing. But I would like to bring out this negative 1 to the n first because it's independent of x and therefore does not need to be inside our integral. All right, that's a very easy integral to evaluate and uh, I'm just going to erase this and put what it's going to be. It's going to be negative one to the n over n plus t plus one. There we go. There is a totally valid rep, uh, representation of our function of t, and that thing is easy to take the derivative of. All right, that means that our f prime of t is equal to the derivative of this thing with respect to t. That's going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, let's see, we're still going to have the negative 1 to the n but this, remember, this is just n plus t plus 1 to the negative 1. So if we took a derivative, we'd get negative to the negative 2. All right, so that's just going to be um, n plus t plus 1 squared. And then we have to take care of that negative sign, and we'll take care of that by just adding 1 right there. Okay. All right, there we go. We have our f prime of t. Now all we have to do is plug in zero and we have i. So that means that i is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity, and it will still have negative 1 to the n plus 1 over, uh, we're plugging in 0 for this, so this is just going to be n plus 1 squared, right? Um, okay, well that doesn't look exactly like anything we had, it looks close to this. Um, but uh, let's see if we can manipulate it to get it even closer to that. Uh, so we know that if we subtract 1 from all our n terms, we could put a parenthesis around that and, and make that n plus 1 in parentheses. And then we subtract 1 from that. Same with this. We just have to add 1 to the index. That's a pretty common trick right there, and I won't bother explaining that. So we add 1 to the index and subtract 1 from all of those n's inside our sum. That will just give us n squared. Well, that's, that's a little bit better. Not exactly, not exactly what we want, um, but we know that if we add 1 to this exponent on negative 1, that will simply have the effect of adding a negative sign in front of our sum. All right, well, now we have it exactly. Now we have i is equal to the negative of this thing, which is the negative of this thing. In other words, it's equal to negative pi squared over There you go. That's my video. Hope you enjoyed that.